Count Coyle, uh, I am a Dáil Deputy for the Cork North Central constituency. Apple's Irish operations are based in Hollyhill in Cork North Central. It's a little over a mile away from where I live. Many of my constituents work on the Hollyhill campus. If you go around the doors in Cork North Central, you will see the Apple logo stuck on uh, the glass of many of the, the, the porches in front of the houses. Now, I'm a member of the Anti-Austerity Alliance. The Anti-Austerity Alliance is a workers' organisation. For us, every job is precious, and the 5,000 jobs at Holly Hill are vital. I want to put on the record of the House Count Carla that there is, in my opinion, no threat, no threat to the jobs at Holly Hill if the state were to refuse to appeal and instead to go after this money. Apple will face this tax bill irrespective of which European Union country they are based in. Why should they go elsewhere? Workers in Cork are providing uh, the company with excellent work and fabulous profits, by the way. Now, last Concorla, our society fails on many fronts in significant measure because the rich do not contribute what they should in taxes. Let me give two examples just from Cork City itself. Apple is not the only multinational in Cork which attracts workers into the city who then find it impossible to source reasonably priced accommodation or sometimes to source accommodation at all. Rents rocket and these workers are fleeced by landlords at a time when the state, if it had the money, could provide public housing at reasonable prices and drive down the rent rates. Apple's plant is situated on the top of a hill overlooking the city. Down below in the city, it's a magnificent view of the city from up around Harbourview Road. Down below in the city, you can see the Cork University Hospital and the Mercy University Hospital. Last night, the Cork Evening Echo reported that 716 people spent time on trolleys in those two hospitals alone in August. In August. Does anyone believe that tax avoidance by multinational corporations is a reality separate to and not connected with the sorry state of so many of our hospitals, schools and other public services? Now, this is a broader debate than the Apple tax question. It's also, in reality, a debate about the future industrial policy in this country. In the 1930s, newly elected Taoiseach Eamon de Valera said, no longer shall our children, like our cattle, be brought up for export. He used the question of mass emigration as a litmus test for the success or otherwise of industrial policy. From 1932 to 58, the state tried to develop indigenous industries behind tariff walls. By the late 50s, as the world experienced a post-war boom, Ireland stagnated with 60,000 men and women every year forced to leave for London, Liverpool, Manchester and further afield. The protectionist policy was ditched by La Masse, and from 1958 to this day, Ireland has been an open economy with attempts to attract foreign direct investment as a key part of industrial strategy. Under this policy, Ireland caught the second half of that post-war boom, joined the EEC, and began to modernise. But the 1980s was a decade of crisis and stagnation. There was net migration of more than 200,000 of our people in the 80s. From 2018 to 14, we experienced a second crisis with net migration of more than 140,000. And by the way, according to figures now released by the Central Statistics Office, nearly half a million of our people forced to leave, though some have returned since. Using the de Valera litmus test, this industrial policy cannot be said to have delivered. So, neither of the two industrial policies have delivered for our people. Seemingly opposite, they have one thing in common. They are both, they are both of them based on capitalism. They are both of them based on the idea of for-profit economics. In 1906, Leon Trotsky wrote a socialist masterpiece 
Permanent revolution results in prospects. In 1910, James Connolly wrote his masterpiece, Labour and Irish History. Both publications examined the case of countries where the bourgeoisie, developing late, never carried out a bourgeois revolution, where the ruling class attempted an industrial policy without ever making an industrial revolution of their own. The capitalist class of such countries, like Ireland, were not capable of developing the country's industry, or to use the language of the government, they would fail to be competitive. In 2007, gross fixed capital formation in the Irish economy stood at 48.7 billion euro. By 2014, it stood at 36.2 billion euro. This is an abysmally low, an abysmally low level of productive investment in the economy. The crisis is shown graphically in construction, where there has been a massive failure to invest by the private sector for want of greater profit. To tackle this problem, there needs to be a break, a break with the system of capitalism. A left government, which broke with the profit system, would use a substantial part of the Apple 13 to 19 billion to invest in well-paid, secure state jobs. The Nevin Economic Institute, the Nevin Economic Research Institute, estimates that a 1 billion euro state stimulus can directly create between 8 and 12,000 jobs. 13 billion euro directly creating the middle figure, 10,000 jobs, 10,000 jobs per billion, equals 130,000 new jobs. 19 billion, directly creating 10,000 jobs per billion, equals 190,000 new jobs. In other words, a greater figure than what currently exists in the entire multinational corporation sector after nearly 60 years of the Lamas policy. But a left government would not merely create new public sector jobs and industries. Capitalism in this country has failed to develop broadband via the telecom industry. Capitalism has failed to deliver fairness in the insurance industry. The profiteers in the construction industry have effectively gone on strike and failed to invest in the midst of the greatest housing crisis the state has ever known. The bankers made greed their god and crashed the entire economy. So in reply to Deputy Martin and his jibes about a socialist industrial policy, yes, a left government would nationalise, under workers' control and management, telecoms, big construction, insurance, banking and other industries. In other words, the decisive sectors of the economy and organise a democratic and socialist plan of production to do what capitalism has never done and will never do. In other words, to organise for this country a real, genuine industrial base with jobs and a decent future for all of our people. Thank you very much, Deputy.